Hi Q, episode 14, and I think the start of a new arc. Oh, it's starting. Come to think of it, that was this is episode 14, so it's the second half of season one. Oh, what are they misreading, Karasuno? There you go. They don't even know. If you don't know, you're about to find out, all of you. You're about to find out about Hinata and Kageyama and everyone. Everyone. This is good though, no? Everyone's gonna go in with low expectations and get smoked. Are we gonna get a new opening? No opening, damn. Episode 14, formidable opponents. Focus on every point. Sixty teams. Wow. Wait, there's no regular season? Whoa, those stakes are way crazier than I thought. Yeah, it was destined. We spent three or four whole episodes with them, so that wasn't accidental. Every point counts. Every point really counts! I thought it would be like most sports with a regular season and then best records advance. This is insane. Yeah, they did a good job skipping that intro. There's no time. Gotta put in the work. These three guys. Number one ace. Overwhelming power and height. It's pretty amazing they have a magazine dedicated to high school volleyball. I mean, basically everyone is formidable. It would cut against the drama to have a team that was just whack. Well, that's going to be a huge episode for Asahi. This seems like it's basically, basically going to be a, a hype episode for future matches. Damn. I mean, good to get it out of the way. We just saw them. It's a crazy road ahead of them. It's a gauntlet. She's it as fuel. And we gotta do it for the seniors especially. They're doing the same thing. They're all doing the same thing. Yep. Who wants it more? Damn, connecting to their pride too. Right, it's out. Who is it? Daichi taking the lead. It's like the show is intentionally messing with me. Just when I think I got the, the names of the crows down, now there are like 60 more teams to deal with. I'm gonna go back and watch that again. I wanna get this right. Okay, I think I have a rough idea. If they win this next match, then they face Date Tech, which is the iron wall of defenders that Asahi had a nervous breakdown against. Also in the bracket, but got seated is Josai, who is in the top four and also has connections to Kageyama, and I think we just saw them. Not in the bracket, probably headed for the championships, is a team whose name I just forgot, but has the, the killer ace, the number one ace. I feel like we're going to war right now, especially with this music. And Ukai did such a great job with that motivation because it, it, it wasn't just about the schedule. He connected it to their, their pride as men, reminding them that they're a laughing stock and also sufficiently setting the challenge ahead of them because that's the thing. Like it's easy to get kind of self-absorbed with it and think about motivating yourself and pushing yourself. What people forget, I think, and what helps put it into perspective is that at this level, I mean, basically everyone else on the playing field is doing exactly the same thing. And there's probably people out there doing it better. There's kind of no room to play around. You know, if you want to win, if you want to be number one, you have to be absolutely insane. There's almost no room for anything else, which, I mean, for these guys, seems to come kind of naturally, so they got a head start there. And wanting it is not enough. You know, it doesn't matter how bad Hinata wants it. It doesn't matter how bad Kageyama wants it. It matters how much they take that energy and put it into actual work. It's going to be brutally painful for all of them. And at the end of the day, it's going to be about how much they, both as individuals and as a group, are able to stomach that pain and put in the work towards actually winning. That's one of the beauties of sports is that it's such a meritocracy. And anytime you enter into that kind of realm, there's just no room for anything other than just grit, work, results. Anyone who doesn't have a stomach for that is not gonna go anywhere. And the sooner they dispel with that illusion, the more honestly they can look at that despite the pain of that realization and how it casts a light on their, their own darkness, the higher the chance they have of actually doing what they need to do. Is this Daichi? <laughs> that would be great. I would love to see a Daichi arc. Oh, better back that up.
and different music too. This whole the whole tone of this show changed in just the beginning of this episode. This is it. This is I'm mean, boot camp is over. It's war. Although this might be boot camp. <laughs> Daichi also leading the girls' volleyball team somehow. He knew what he was doing. See right through this nice guy act. Damn. Let's get that girl anime punch. Why does it look like she has a handprint on her face? Did I miss something? Oh, she slapped herself. Damn. She's intense. I feel like some kind of mixer between the girls team and guys team will go a long way for morale. Or would completely derail them, but that's a chance I'm willing to take. <laughs> Let's quickly get through all these boring classes so we can get to what matters. Volleyball war. <laughs> He's like, literally not paying attention to his test at all. Good man. You'll forget this test, you'll never forget this volleyball season. Look at that resolve. It's so great that everyone's on the same page. It's been built really well. Hand signs. And not will eat up anything volleyball that you give him. Because he has true, genuine, deep passion. It won't even be work for him. It'll be effortless. This is such a genius montage. Like, people not <laughs> doing their normal tasks but not able to focus at all. Your Mirin can wait, Obasan. We have more important things to do, like volleyball war. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, see? We need that mixer. The longer this goes on, the more uncomfortable it becomes. We've all done it though. <laughs> We've all been there. Or go out and find that girl and stop writing this elaborate fanfic. Their attitude, man, it's just so beautiful. No complaints, just total focus, willingness to do the work. Walk it off! War is coming. Quit your job. That's <laughs> right, respect. That's legit. My dude is putting it all on the line. <laughs> nice. They're developing a relationship too on the court. The kids just coach themselves. No. They need to get on board. It's kind of weird. I'm wondering what they're gonna do with that, but not to cast any disparaging things on his character. But Suki, is that his name? He definitely seems like the weakest link here. Not in terms of his ability, but in terms of his his attitude. He's the only one that has anything negative to say. He's the only one trying to reduce the amount of concern they have for the match, and he's the only one that says negative things about teammates in a non-humorous manner. I feel like that's a character arc incoming. <laughs> Speaking of arcs, I feel like her introduction is coming soon too. She's been kind of quiet. She's making moves on his own. Interesting. That's cool. What's your deal? <laughs> Something's going on there. I wonder what their grades are like. I know some of them are holding down both. And some of them are not. <laughs> some of them are certainly failing. There's so much going on. Like, there's so much character subtext and setup here, I feel. A lot of people going through stuff silently. And that's how Daichi single-handedly saved the women's volleyball team. This is happening so fast. Which is actually great. Like, I'm super excited to get started. Something's brewing in Shimizu-san. Just your presence. <laughs> For some of them. No! 
That is actually super badass. It's simple but great. Uh oh. Uh oh. Why do I feel scared? Kambate? Kambate. Tanaka's good. Tanaka is good. I mean, it's <laughs> meaningful given her personality. <laughs> like, she's so quiet, yeah. Aww. <laughs> I love it. I love how this the sign in one word from one girl. That's all we needed. That's just the icing on the cake to cap a long week or two of training. What more do you want? He's honest. Yeah, this is the story of a group of them, but I feel like at the core is this pair. They might be the last two on the court. It feels so long, though. It hasn't been that many episodes. I mean, the beauty of this is that obviously they're on the same team. New ending, right? Is this new ending? Or just a dramatic way to end the episode. There it is. Why does that banner look so damn cool? Or maybe this was the end of the first half. Whatever. Either way, definitely turning point. I feel like there's going to be before this and after this. We just watched a lot of character development and setup. And man, it was set up well. Like, like I said, I really feel like we're going into conflict. We're going into a battle, a series of battles in a long war that I don't know, it might span a couple years. But I'm really invested in this this uh, volleyball season in particular just because, I mean, I like all of them. I like the seniors too. How sweet would it be if Daichi got a win, you know? I know that's from episode two because I just made that into the thumbnail. <laughs> Wow. Can you feel it? <laughs> I can feel it. I don't know. I didn't expect that. I mean, I was excited for the upcoming matches, but that episode just took it to a new level. Just how much they want it. And also the challenges that are in front of them. I mean, I think that's one of the beauties of sports. It's a it's a microcosm of life. It's a very streamlined way of boiling down really important concepts. To take a very broad perspective, they're really young kids and in the perspective of their lives, whether or not they win the volleyball tournament, or I should say that the actual win itself, the championship itself would end up being a nice memory for them. It wouldn't really be much more than that. But that's not really what it's about. It's about the tenets they can internalize and take away that will inform basically everything, everything else. Sports and maybe by extension certain games are a vehicle for exploring things that are really important but also really difficult to explore in real life partly because I think in some way there's a push against them. This is a little bit tough to, to talk about, but there's kind of a distinction that you have to make. There's different areas of life. You know, one is in the domain of, let's say, the, the intellectual, the conceptual, the higher human, the emotion, the compassion, the sympathy. The other would be something like nature, cruelty, death, limited resources, things you can't control in life, the domain in which not everybody can win and some will certainly lose. That side is tougher to look at, but I think a fully integrated human being is someone who is in touch with both, you know, both the realities of nature and the depths of pain and cruelty, as well as the more artistic, more emotional. With sports and other domains like sports that sports perhaps represents, there's kind of no bullshitting. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world and there are wants that you have, there are desires, and there's danger and difficulty in pursuing them. Sports takes that world and kind of shrinks it down in a way that's fun so you can participate in it and get the lessons, perhaps in training for a, a much bigger game, which is life. Because if you're in that domain where you're trying to win, you know, you have a desire and you want something, and you're aiming for something, you're one, going to be facing competition, you're going to be going against the grain, there are going to be people who want you to fail, there are going to be people who are working harder than you, and it's all going to come down to a competition. And there's a certain level of insanity that you have to be able to reach. I say insanity in the sense that you have to reach a different level of thinking and action than most people are comfortable with, to the point where it's comparatively abnormal in order to succeed. It's pretty easy to get to an average level, and it's less easy, but still not that difficult to get to slightly above average. Once you want to get into the elite is where that intensity comes in, where the sacrifice becomes necessary, where, where pain tolerance becomes necessary, where drive becomes necessary. I feel all that watching this episode because I'm watching these kids who I've grown attached to over the first 14 episodes, and they're such great people and they have so much heart and I admire all of their traits and I want them to win. But there's nothing about this that's guaranteed for them. The only thing that's going to matter is how well they can manage themselves, how well they can take their emotions and that raw energy and put it into things that are practical and real, do work, sacrifice and other areas of their lives, push themselves, hurt themselves, feel pain, and get up and show up to practice every day, and then get to the match and win, you know, like actually 
fight people who want to win just as badly as them and find a way to overcome. That I think is the thrill of it. That's the thrill of competition. That's partly the thrill of adventure is the fact that nothing's guaranteed and that there's risk and danger. In here, in sports, in certain areas of life, there is kind of a necessity of accepting truth. And I think highly connected with accepting truth is the ability to put yourself in painful situations, wrestle with personal demons, which are probably the most painful of all, and take all that and use all that pressure and turn it into diamonds. The drama for the show is not just the volleyball match, right? It's like pushing the limits of the human spirit, pushing the limits of the human spirit to a point where it informs action and they actually can win. You know, they can achieve victory for themselves and for their team. It's super exciting. It's, it's a lot more exciting than I even anticipated.